Uh, it's nice to see uh, all these uh, pictures and images of uh, Father Moon, um, especially today we're remembering his life um, and his ascension to the spiritual world. So this is the 10th anniversary, uh, 10 years ago, when uh, Father Moon died and went to the spiritual world. So it's always, uh, for me, good on a day like today to think about uh, Father Moon's life and look at just some of the many things that he accomplished. We'd be here for late into the afternoon if I tried to talk about all the details, but I'm just going to give kind of like the highlights. Um, Starting off, uh, Father Moon was born in 1920 in Korea. And if you think about it, if you look at the whole globe, Korea is just a little bitty speck, right, on the planet. Um, Where Father and Mother Moon um, were born is not far from Pyongyang, which is the capital of North Korea right now. And he was born into a farming family, so they lived uh, uh, out on a farm. Uh, out on a farm, and at that time it was under Japanese control, a uh, pretty brutal uh, control. So they had a very difficult um, uh, circumstance and situation. When he was 10 years old, his family converted and became Christians. Um, and after they, you know, converted, Father Moon kept wondering why. Are people suffering so much, especially with the Japanese persecution, and, and, and especially they were persecuting Christians a lot? You know, why is there so much? If God is so great and so good, why is there so much suffering in the world? And he kept praying about this and praying about this. And uh, I'm going to just read his. It ended up him having this experience with Jesus Christ uh, when he was 15 years old. Um, it was in 1935 when he received his calling for his mission. And this is how he describes it in his um, autobiography. So I'm just going to read from his autobiography. It was the night before Easter, the night, the year I turned 16. I was on Mount Myodo, praying all night and begging God in tears for answers. Why he created a world so filled with sorrow and despair? Why was the all-knowing and all-powerful God leaving the world in such pain? What should I do for my tragic homeland? I wept in tears as I asked these questions repeatedly. Early Easter morning, after I spent the entire night in prayer, Jesus appeared before me. He appeared in an instant like a gust of wind and said to me, God is in great sorrow because of the pain of humankind. You must take on a special mission on earth having to do with heaven's work. Jesus spoke clearly about the work I would have to do. His words were extraordinary, having to do with saving humanity from its suffering and bringing joy to God. So that's how he received his his calling. So from 1935, he started preparing himself. Um, still going to school, he studied Japanese and Korean, and, and in 1945 is actually when he began his public ministry. Um, actually, in Father's life, he was sent to prison six times. He was sent to prison by uh, the Japanese government, by the North Korean government, and the South Korean government, and the American government. So, in 1946, um, God called Father Moon to go up to North Korea to preach. Now, North Korea was communist, and so they were completely against uh, any kind of religion. So they really, you know, he's going up to preach in a place where people that hate Christians. So he's up there uh, preaching, and he gets arrested. The first time he's arrested, taken in, tortured, and then eventually it seems like he almost died, so they just tossed him out, and he was able to recover. But he goes out and starts preaching again. But this time they arrest him and then they send him to prison camp um, in Hungnam, which is basically a fertilizer factory. And they had to carry bags of fertilizer until they died. Basically the idea of that prison camp, just work him to get death. You know, you don't have to kill him, you can get some value out of him by working him. And so he spent almost three years there and was finally freed because of the Korean War, uh, because the um, invading forces from the um, Allied forces, the American and the United Nations, uh, started bombing that prison camp 
and so he was able to escape. The interesting thing is that, you know, usually you think, oh, you go to the south where it's safe. In fact, I heard the other day uh, from um, uh, Reverend Walter Frank mentioned that uh, there was a, um, a huge sh United Nations ship there waiting to cape all the refugees from the prison camp and that around to down to the south. So he could have, at that point, he could have just gone and gotten on the ship and been taken to safety down in the south. Um, but he didn't do that. He instead, he went back to uh, Pyongyang and was looking for all the people that he'd been teaching in Pyongyang. So instead of going the safe way, he, Father Moon always went the, the hard way, the way that God called him to go. So um, after that, then he went down to Busan and finally, it was in 1954 that he actually established his first church. So, there's the first church. Pretty fancy. <laughs> Not even as fancy as ours, right? Uh, so, it's a bit out of uh, cardboard boxes that he got from the, from the thrown out from the uh, military base. <clears throat> but, so this in, in the early 50s, between 1955 and 1959, he established 700 churches. And imagine that, just in four years, 700 churches all around Korea. And then in 1958, he sent out the first missionaries to Japan and even missionaries to the United States, 50, 1958 and 59. In 1960 was when Father and Mother Moon were blessed in marriage. And that was the beginning of the whole uh, blessing of marriage providence was in 1960. And then in 1965, Father Moon made his first tour around the world. <clears throat> so if you think about that, 1965, he's 45 years old, right? Well, when he was 50 years old, he moved all of the international headquarters from Korea to the United States and worked in the United States. And the world, so the World Mission Headquarters was in New York City starting in 1971. And during that time, he did lots of speaking tours, Christianity in Crisis, Day of Hope, all over America trying to revive it, basically talking about God's three headaches. I mean, we all know God's main pain is that <clears throat> the breakdown of the family, the, the problem of people, people of faith fighting against each other, God's children fighting each other, and communism, atheistic communism. So from 1972 to 1990, he was working in, in, in America. And at the end of that time, you know, during that time, Father Moon established a church in every one of the states in the United States by 1972. In 1975, he created a um, seminary and sent out missionaries to 120 countries around the world. And in 1982 was the first large uh, blessing ceremony in uh, New York and in, Nor and in uh, Korea. In 1985, when you saw in the video, uh, Father Moon was uh, sent to prison for, uh, for not paying um, a few thousand dollars in taxes. Where normally if someone doesn't pay their taxes, you, you make them pay a fine. You don't send them to prison. But because they, he was a religious leader, they didn't like what he was teaching, they tried to, to get him to, to stop, to get rid of him, to silence him. But he, he got even more active. That's when he created the Washington Times newspaper. <clears throat> and coming out from there, he also established the Assembly of World Religions. So relig people from all over the world came to this assembly about people of all different religions working together. And then in 1990 and then 1991, Father Moon let, met the leaders of the, the communist world. So after all this talk about you know, anti-communist and overcoming communism, so finally he meets Mikhail Gorbachev, the, the uh, head of the Soviet Union, which some of you weren't even alive when the Soviet Union existed. And he met Kim Il-sung, the head of North Korea. So all this, this is the work that Father Moon um, invested in to create, you know, first, first challenge to overcome, the problem of the, the communism, which is anti-religion um, and anti-freedom. 
And this was, the, by 1990, you have the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. Then from his, his last uh, years, from 1990, he established the Women's Federation for World Peace. He changed the, changed the name of our church from Unification Church to the Family Federation for World Peace because he wanted us to focus on the family. <clears throat> and then in 1999, he established the Interreligious International Federation for World Peace, <clears throat> which eventually evolved into being the Universal Peace Federation that we know today in 2005. Uh, in 2000, he started the American Clergy Leadership Conference, and in 2003, they did Middle East Peace Initiatives, working in the Middle East, trying to bring together the Jewish and uh, Muslims who were in conflict there. 2006, they set up the Peace Palace in Korea in the Chungpyeong Lake area. In 2009, he wrote his autobiography. In 2011, he was doing speaking tours all around the world, in Asia, Europe, and Africa. And it was in 2012 that he finally um, got pneumonia and passed away from uh, related issues to that. You know, his lung kind of failed. What a life, right? <laughs> so many um, things, and it's really valuable for us to, to reflect and remember, you know, 92 years, all the things that uh, Father Moon did. And I just touched on a little bit of them. Actually, in terms of the projects that he did, Father Moon was committed to touching every aspect of people's lives, um, you know, from the, you know, the, the spiritual stuff, but also the practical aspects of life. So if you look at that, that diagram, you know, the marriage, education, world relief, interfaith work, food, business, science, technology, world peace, media, healing, sports, and the arts. So I'm going to give you a whirlwind spin of just a few of some of the many projects that our Father Moon uh, established. Of course, fundamentally underlying all of our work are Father, the teachings from Father Moon. Our understanding of the divine principle, uh, you know, Father Moon even put, pulled together had pulled together the world scriptures to bring about scriptures from all of the world's religions uh, to understand how they all have so much in common. And of course, the Chun Sung Gyeong, the Pyung Hwa Gyeong, and the Chambo Gyeong, um, all of Father's words and thousands and thousands of speeches of uh, of Father, uh, and then the unification thought. Uh, the philosophical aspect of things. So in the educational world, Barrytown uh, Seminary, Unification Theological Seminary. In Bridgeport, we have a university in Connecticut. Sun Moon University, which is near Seoul in South Korea. Uh, the Chun Shim Graduate School of Theology, another seminary. This is up in the Chungpyeong Lake area. And then the Chun Shim International Youth Center and International Academy, also in the the Chumpyong uh, Lake area. And Father Moon is really committed to guiding leadership, raising up young people to be leaders. And so CARP, the Collegiate Association for the Research of Principles, was the main organization. And a lot of you participated in CARP, or your sisters participating, or uh, others, others that, that uh, you know. Uh, in addition to CARP on college, focusing on college campuses, Father uh, put together the Professor's World Peace Academy. And they did lots of conferences bringing academic people from all over the world to explore uh, really deep issues about how do we build a world of peace. Um, did a lot of character education for young people. Uh, even in the Soviet Union in Moscow, once the door opened up, uh, many conferences, International Educational Foundation, even went to China and was teaching people in China um, developed family education on sexual purity uh, through the um, uh, International Education Foundation and a lot of their textbooks. So in the area of, of world relief and aid, helping people who are in need, uh, established the International Relief Friendship Foundation that delivered food and supplies to people all, all around the world. And the Women's Federation for World Peace, um, they've done a lot of projects in um, uh, Africa is sponsoring schools. I think there's over 50 schools that they've sponsored in Africa. Actually, just last weekend they had a fundraiser for that. Um, in the interfaith world, interfaith activity, um, 
like I said before, the assembly of world religions, bringing all the people of faith together to work. Um, the Religious Youth Services uh, Project. This was really an interesting one. You had young people from all different faiths come together. They would work on service projects during the day and then share with each other about their faith in the evening time. It was a beautiful, beautiful experience. Of course, uh, the American Clergy Leadership Conference, which I mentioned, bringing Christian clergy together. Uh, and then they did uh, lots of pilgrimages to both the, the Middle East and also to Korea. Uh, here's some pictures from uh, the uh, Middle East Peace Initiative when they were in the Middle East. And also there's the women's uh, clergy uh, leadership, Women for Peace. And then all the projects for bringing peace, especially dealing with the problem of communism, which was fighting, you know, causing problems all over the world. Victory over communism was the main um, tool that Father used to teach the critique of communist thinking and teachings. Uh, and ra international rallies for freedom and, and established CAUSA, which uh, uh, did a lot of their work in South America. Amazing events. Um, they were called off. So really the victory over communism, even meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev and Kim Il-sung, and, and once the doors opened, going to the Soviet Union, giving workshops, pe teaching people from communist countries with uh, Marxist ideas they didn't even understand about God, about God. And um, <clears throat> then even bringing the blessing of marriage to people from all different uh, uh, faiths, traditions, and backgrounds. Another one of Father Moon's projects was the International Highway, and you hear the peace road that Mother Moon encourages uh, connecting the, the entire world through a, a highway. Uh, there's the media projects. There's so many things to talk about, and I'm just kind of zipping through them, right? The World Media Conference, bringing people together to talk about values in, in uh, media, the Washington Times. Uh, they previously started magazines called Insight and World and I. Um, uh, Tempia, uh, Tempos del Mundo, which was a uh, um, Spanish um, newspaper, Noticias del Mundo. Um, also businesses, uh, ginseng, I worked selling ginseng tea for a while. Health food, yay! Um, also the True World Foods with uh, the fish business. And even helped North Korea start a car factory in North Korea. Uh, Tongil Enterprises was with heavy machinery. Uh, and part of that was to help bring technology to share it around the world. Technology for industry. Um, Tong, uh, Master Marine building boats. Lots of boats. In the area of healing. Um, of course, the spiritual, uh, the uh, uh, Chongpyong Heaven and Earth Training Center, which is now the, the H.J. Hyojung uh, Chungwang uh, Training Center, Heaven and Earth Training Center, uh, where we go, where there's uh, lots of spiritual retreats and activities there. Um, also, there's the Chunshim International Medical Center, which is in the Chongpyong Lake area. Um, even made a hospital in, in uh, Tokyo, the Ishin uh, Hospital. And then there's sports and performing arts. Early on, um, Father Moon organized the Korean folk ballet that, that, to, to help share uh, Korean culture, and then took the little angels all around the world. They've, little angels have been everywhere, it seems. Um, they even went to North Korea as ambassadors for peace and met with uh, uh, young people in, in North Korea. And out of that also evolved, uh, uh, Father Moon established the Little Angels Performing Arts School that helps cultivate the, the arts. And then um, also the Universal Ballet and the New York Symphony. In sports, he had a soccer team. It was the Ilwa soccer team called Chunma. And they, seven times they won the, the, the Asian Cup. And finally, just marriage and family. All of the, the, the blessing ceremonies, all of these couples whose lives have been touched because of, of Father Mother Moon. Here's a picture from the 30,000 couples in Seoul and the Olympic Stadium. And this is in 1997 in, in uh, um, RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. And even blessing couples from different uh, religious backgrounds. And here's a blessing for clergy. So Father Moon in his life, his commitment was to how do I bring change to this world? How do I build the kingdom of heaven? And so all these things are what make up a happy and fulfilling life. So every aspect of society of Father Moon touched.
touched through these projects. So that's just quite a, a zoom through all of the, the not, not even all, not even half of all the projects and activities of um, uh, Father and Mother Moon. They left uh, such a legacy uh, behind for us. So for us today, I think uh, one good thing for us to, to think about and reflect on is what, what, how did Father Moon impact our lives? And uh, that's what I want to you know, share in our discussion. If I think about just some of the things that I learned from Father Moon, number one is just understanding that God is a suffering God. God's not just sitting up on the, the, in the clouds watching and laughing at, at the crazy things that we as human beings do. No, God loves us deeply and suffers when any of his children are suffering. Um, also that we have responsibility. God designed us. It's amazing. God designed us to be co-creators with God. God doesn't control everything. God gives us genuine responsibility. Which means we can actually have joy in life by doing creating things and inventing things and creating stuff. And we have responsibility in our life to grow. Um, also that uh, understanding the importance of family. That family is the key to building a world of peace and the, the, the root problem has to, ha, starts in the family so to, we can build good families then we can work to create a good world and then just having the divine principle and the God centered worldview it's so nice to be able to talk with people you know people they have any questions you know a friend of ours you know someone died we could talk to them about the spiritual world you know People that you know, are afraid of what's happening around the world, we can talk about the principles of Cain and Abel, uh, understanding indemnity, understanding God's heart and God's love. We have so much that we can share with people. And then just the last thing, you know, understanding that God called us to be messiahs, tribal messiahs, you know, at the tribal level, in our family and, and the people in our lives. But not just waiting for the Messiah up in the clouds to come and, and, and save us. That God actually has given each one of us and trusts us to become Messiahs to our friends, to the people we work with, to our neighbors, to our relatives, and the people in the world around us. So with that, I just, I, I'm going to bring it to a conclusion. Today is the day to remember um, uh, Father Moon, our true father. To reflect on the benefit that God is that through God has given us through a Father Moon uh, and through uh, His life. So uh, let me offer a prayer, and then we'll we'll meet together. And and everyone, please think. You know what can I share with everyone about how uh, Father Moon has affected my life? Okay, let me let me offer a prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for your presence in our lives, for your precious love, and for the chance we have to participate in your providence of restoration and healing. Please guide us. Um, we come before you. Sometimes we feel confused. Sometimes we really don't know what, <clears throat> what to do. But we know that you're always with us, that you are our partner in every situation that we have. So we want to, again, open up our hearts to receive from you, to understand your point of view. Please guide us as we seek to understand and care and love the people in our lives. So we thank you, and especially we're so grateful this day we can remember and honor uh, our Father Moon for the life that he's led, the foundation that he laid for creating a world of true peace and true love. So as your sons and daughters and as blessed sons for families, I offer up ourselves to you. Amen and adieu.